Yeah, we are a district of about 46,000 students. Um, we have a pretty lively CTE program in our district. So we have roughly 78 programs, uh, 120 or so teachers uh, spanning 11 high schools. Uh, additionally, we have 11 career coordinators at each one of our high schools, or one career coordinator at each high school. And those career coordinators are providing direct support to our CTE teachers and programs, specifically focused on business partnerships, as well as development of career connected learning experiences. Uh, we're kind of in a unique position here in PPS in that just 10 years ago, we only had 19 programs, and I think in the neighborhood of 40 to 45 teachers. So. Um, over the past decade, we've seen some significant growth in our programs. Uh, and of course, correspondingly, we've seen a growth in the demand for career connected learning experiences. So uh, as a district, we've had to kind of figure out how do we prioritize our resources? How do we uh, grow as an organization? Um, we're not a big organization, only six staff members within our CTE department. So we have to think about how do we use technology how do we kind of get the most out of the resources that we've had? So my work in the district began in 2017. Um, and coincidentally, that's when my first conversations began with uh, Justin and Group Trail. Um, just a couple months after I started, um, chance meeting we began to have a discussion about what the future of partnership management in the district is and what the future of uh, managing career related learning experiences and career connected learning experiences in the district could look like. My task when I was hired onto the district in February of 2017 was to build our bench of partners because the demand had exploded over the past 10 years. Uh, but also then develop a system that we could manage our career-related learning experiences, manage student participation and attendance of those experiences, and then also developing a reporting and accountability schema so that we could begin to take a look at impact, specifically those students who are participating in those experiences, but also insight and wisdom into what students are not participating and then how to develop strategies and supports so that we could develop targeted opportunities for those students. Well, I, I think where we were, you know, oh my gosh, six years into, five and a half years into the launch, so we've got roughly a thousand partners in the platform. So I think one of the things I'm looking forward to is kind of improving, improving the diversity of our partners in the platform. So I think part of that is kind of actively engaging in existing partners, but also using that knowledge and insight to um, kind of put on the leading edge uh, recruitment efforts to diversify our partners in our platform. The other piece of our platform that I'm really excited about is looking at um, dynamic data. So one of the things that have been recently implemented within Group Trail is the use of uh, data, uh, Google Data Studio. So that gives us real-time data access, dynamic views with really um, granular and highly intuitive, um, I guess, drill down um, functions within those interfaces that will allow us at the district level, but also our practitioners at the school level to really take a look at what are some trends that they're seeing at their school, and then based upon those trends, what type of uh, targeted strategies can they employ at the school to um, uh, impact and uh, engage students, especially, specifically our, uh, you know, our historically underserved students, our students who are ELL, as well as those students who are on uh, IEPs within uh, our schools and our programs. Uh, other th areas of um, uh, that, that I'm particularly excited about is you know we want to continue to evolve what we've done with work-based learning and tracking work-based learning. Uh, look at um, how we're going to um, operationalize some of the work that we've done around tracking industry-recognized credentials. Uh, and another area that we've kind of dabbled in this year uh, and have done so by pulling student interest survey data into Partner Connect so that we have some, a couple of our pilot schools have insight into what student interests are around career connected learning. So looking to scale that work and um, be able to kind of develop some district as well as school-based strategies, specifically around career interest as well as program interest.
Well, I, I think, you know, one of the things that, you know, as I rewind back five or six years ago, we tried to keep it as simple as possible. So we kept it simple and we just recorded work-based learning experiences. So that was kind of putting our toe in the water, um, got real good at that, um, supported our building-based uh, career coordinators and teachers and making sure that uh, we were able to capture career-related learning experiences, career-connected learning experiences, uh, layered in a partnership management and a partnership engagement component, uh, and kind of began to use that as a scaffolding for uh, bigger and better things. So I think you know the lesson learned there is, yeah, start small. Don't try to boil the ocean. Um, get really good at doing a few simple tasks, and then once you get familiar with the platform and get familiar with what the needs of your district are, then figure out, okay, how do you work with Justin and his team to kind of layer on different features and functions that will meet the needs of your students, your programs, and your district. Yeah, so Beaverton has 33 different programs of study um, in 11 different career clusters. So we have manufacturing, construction, engineering, IT, um, digital, electronics, health science, um, we have culinary and so auto. And so with all of our programs, um, we are housed at nine different schools in our school district. And we have successfully implemented work-based learning in all 33 of our programs. Yeah, so we use Group Chill for two different uh, basic roles. One is to keep track of all of our industry recognized credentials. Uh, and so when um, you earn money for pathways funding, uh, if students earn those credentials. And so we needed a way to track those when students actually completed those live. So right now what we do is we actually have uh, asked teachers um, what industry credentials they have incorporated into their program. And then we work with Group Shell to basically figure out how to report on those credentials. And then we can basically export that into our student information system for our end of year reports. The other thing we do is also with work-based learning, we basically keep track of who the industry partner is and we keep track of what students have actually engaged in uh, work-based learning and then basically use Group Shell to export that into a format that we can also use in our student information system and all that gets sent to ODE in June. Yeah, so one of our goals is that we're going to try to do work-based learning in every intermediate and also advanced uh, CTE course. So we're asking our pathways not just to come up with one work-based learning opportunity, but actually asking all of our programs to come up with a minimum of two. Um, most of our programs right now are doing one or two. Um, a couple programs are doing four. And so using Group Shell is a great way to keep track of all this because before Group Shell, we basically had teachers do all the reporting on Excel documents at the end of the year. Uh, and they would have to basically look back and think about <clears throat> who was involved in that process in like February or November, it could have been a long time ago. Um, and they had to do all that reporting after the fact. And with Group Trail, it actually gives us the opportunity to do it live as soon as they finish it. So it makes it easier in our teachers instead of trying to do it and put it in all at the end of the year, which as most people know, that's the busiest time of the year for teachers. Our other goal too is, is figuring out how can we incorporate industry credentials in every one of our programs. Um, so we've been successfully working with ODE, and we now have approved IRCs in all of 11 clusters um, for our CT programs. And so we're hoping to expand those <coughs> as well for all of our different uh, CT programs next year. Yeah, I'd say that one of the main words of wisdom is work with your IT department and to figure out how um, basically the data needs to be exported and how do they basically need that uh, information sent to the state. Uh, that's going to be probably the first thing. The second thing I would say too is figuring out how do you um, hope to use a system like this and so what are your goals and so we knew that not just with work-based learning we needed a way to keep track of our industry credentials and so that was one thing that's really important. Um, one area we're hoping to actually add into in the future and track as well is figure out how can we um, keep track of our industry partners in Group Show and so basically my one piece of advice would be assess your needs and what are the things that are going to be beneficial for your district and then work with Group Shell to basically um, make that system work for your teachers and for your administration so they can actually get the reports and, and export the data that actually is needed.